and welcome to Crumbs and Doilies HQ and welcome to a masterclass video. Um, I'm going to be doing masterclasses the first Thursday of every month, so make sure you check them out every time. Um, we did a little poll on Instagram a few weeks ago and asked you guys what you wanted to be masterclassed into. Is that a thing? It is now. Um, and this is one of the most popular things we got asked for. It is a cookie decorating masterclass. And there's just so many things you can do with cookies, so this is going to be really fun. So all of the techniques I'm going to be using today involve royal icing. I've made royal icing a few times on my channel, um, but today I'm going to make it with egg white. Some of you can't get a hold of egg white powder, which is one of the components of royal icing. So I'm going to make it with real eggs. It's very, very simple. So I've got 450 grams of icing sugar. Just shuffle that through a sieve. That is incredibly poofy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's sweet. And now I'm going to add my egg whites. Now, Royal Icing is available to buy in a lot of UK supermarkets, certainly. Um, the one, some of the larger supermarket chains will have like ready-made Royal Icing that you just add water to and whip up. Um, obviously, that's super convenient. Um, otherwise, you can buy dried egg white powder, as I say. You can get that from most online cake decorating stores. But if you don't have either of those, and you do have icing sugar and eggs, which are usually readily available, then it's super easy. So the 450 grams of icing sugar to two large egg whites. Now, obviously, you can keep your egg yolks, keep them in the fridge, or you can even keep them in the freezer, and then use them when you want to make, like, lemon curd or something like that. Uh, just shuffle those over here for now. And I'm going to add them to my sugar, but I'm going to add them while the mix is going round. So, obviously, I'm using a freestanding mixer. You could do this just with a hand whisk, uh, one of the electric hand whisks. That will work. Um, you can do it with a whisk, like a regular unpowered whisk, but it will take a little time. Um, but I'm just cheating. I'm just having it on a low speed at the minute because as you saw earlier, this icing sugar is super cloudy so I don't want it to all like float off. Um, but once it all starts coming together, you want to speed that up to quite a high speed and let that go for about four or five minutes. Oh hey, so my royal icing has been going for about five minutes now and it's looking a really good consistency for like piping like piped messages or like st like a little bit stiffer but because what we're going to be doing in this video is a lot of like run out sort of stuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the stiff stuff out stiff stuff um, just to keep to one side so that I can use it for things like letters or you know dots or whatever and the rest of it I'm going to use for flooding and run outs but before I move on I am going to just cling film my bowl because royal icing dries really hard and really crispy so if it's exposed to the air for a very long time it'll just go like really gross and crunchy you don't want that so with the rest of my royal icing, I have some water here with a little teaspoon and I'm going to start adding it and mixing it a little at a time. Um, the consistency I want to get it to is kind of loose ribbon stage and I'll show you what that is. Um, but you want to make sure you do it in little stages because if you go too far, you're going to have mega runny royal icing and you'll never get it back. So I'm just going to test it um, just by picking a bit up on the spatula and just drawing it back and forth across the surface of it. And it's kind of taking a bit too long to sink back in and become one, so I think it needs a little bit more water. So when it's ready, what you want from your ribbons is for it to sink in and become one again within about 10 seconds. So this is just right. So that's it. That's how to make royal icing and that's how to make both of the consistencies that you might need for decorating. So I'm going to clear the decks and get some decorating done. So I'm using my simple vanilla cookie recipe. It's a bit like a shortbread. It's the one that I used in my Ice Gems video, so I'll put a link to that in the description box. Um, I've also got a really good one for a, a chocolate cookie. The main thing is that you don't want to use a recipe that's going to spread too much or be too textural, otherwise you're never going to get a nice clean finish. And what you don't want is to, you know, hope for a star shape and end up with a spread out blob. Uh, <laughs> but these recipes are absolutely foolproof, I hope unless you're 
you know, a real fool. I've actually already coloured my royal icing, so I've got a few colours in the more runny consistency for run out, and I have a few colours in a stiffer consistency so I can add detail. Um, and the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do run out. So um, you might have seen some of my other videos where I have actually um, used a stiffer consistency to build a kind of wall around the shape that I'm making and then flooded it with a looser consistency and that's absolutely fine especially if you are doing an awkward shape that needs really really um, very definitive like corners and edges and dips and stuff but if you're just doing simple shapes like stars or hearts or circles then you can go ahead and just use the runny one and it, uh, it has a really good effect as well so I've got my runny one and I've got it in a piping bag with a number two nozzle on it um, you could use anything two and up, um, maybe not four, it might be a bit floody. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is to make my outline. So when you're doing outlines, you want to have a little bit of distance between the cookie or the cupcake or whatever it is that you're icing and the nozzle, because that way you can use it as a kind of, almost like a piece of string. I've done a few videos on piping with royal icing, so make sure you check those out for extra hints and tips. So once you have your outline, you can then, what's called flooding it, um, I mean if your nozzle was a bit bigger you could just really really flood, flood it but because mine's not that big, I'm just doing the best I can. But don't worry, you don't have to fill all the holes just yet because we're going to use a little neat trick. So I've basically filled my shape but I have a little bit of um, holes to fill and also some areas where the circle might not be quite straight. The circle's not straight, but you know what I mean, the outline isn't quite perfect enough. So I'm using one of these very po pointy, pokey things. Um, if you don't have a pokey thing of your own, you can use a toothpick. I'm sure it's got a name, but I don't know what it is. And you just want to use it to gently guide the icing to anywhere that you feel like it's missing. So any holes that you've got. And if you want to adjust the edges of your shape, maybe your circle is a little bit overly, you can actually push the walls out as you sort of whirl up around this pokey thing to make your circle completely perfect. So that is basic run out or flooding if you like um, and normally if you decorate on top of that you would need to, to wait for that to dry completely and that does take quite a long time, anywhere between one and three hours sometimes depending on the consistency of the royal icing but you can actually get a really nice effect if you decorate using wet royal icing on top of wet royal icing so I'm going to show you how it's done. So we start with a run out. So now that I've finished that, while it's completely wet, I've got another um, colour. I'm using pink and I'm using a runny consistency one as well. And I'm just going to start by putting little dots on. And then, using a clean pokey thing every single time you do this, you want to drag from the top to the bottom. And it makes a little heart. <laughs> Now that is a really, really cool technique and you could just leave it at the dots if you wanted or you could do stripes and drag your pokey thing through it to make a kind of spider's web. There's tons of stuff you could do. And the next thing we're going to do is a thing called quilting. Um, this is where you want to get a bit of definition between two sections of a pattern. So I'm going to show you how to do it on a round one. The first thing I'm going to do is to draw out my basic pattern. Uh, so I'm going to start with my circle. And I'm just using an edible pen here, don't worry, this isn't a sharpie. And now I want to kind of turn it into, could be a beach ball, could be a basketball. So when you want to do this quilted style or where you want to have definition between two different shapes, you want to colour in alternate bits. So I'm going to start with the edges. And when it gets to the corner bit, I don't want to go all the way in because I can always drag that out using my pokey. Make sure you cover up all your pen. I don't want any black bits coming through. And once you've finished that section, you can move on to the next door but one section. And 
once you've done all of that, you then need to wait for that to dry. Um, that's going to take an hour or two. Um, if you do it when it's still moist, it's just going to completely melt together and you're not going to get that definition. And luckily, I did one earlier, so I'm going to show you. Here it is. And it's completely dry. It's gone really nice and firm. And I'm going to do a contrasting colour. You could do the same colour, but maybe slightly darker or lighter for a bit more definition. Um, and just repeat the same thing that you just did, but in the hole. So that is essentially how you get that technique. Obviously, you're going to need to wait to, for the whole thing to dry completely before you really see it popping, uh, because they're both a completely different sort of well, one of them's really matte and one of them's really glossy, so it looks a bit odd at the minute, but it's going to look great in a couple of hours, I promise. So the next one we're going to do is um, painted colours onto wet runouts. So I'm going to start by doing a simple circle runout. I think it's always worth going around the edges with your pokey, just because you're never going to get a perfect circle the first time around, I mean, unless you're a genius. And this way you can just fix those little bits that aren't quite right, but in a really controlled way. So now that I've got my almost perfect circle, I am going to, while it's still wet, I have some food colouring here and some vodka or some just alcohol. You can probably just use water as well if you don't want to use alcohol. But what I'm going to do is get a really nice sort of pale colour, first of all. So starting with blue, it's nice and wet and I've got a nice big paintbrush here. And I'm going to just kind of dab it around randomly. It doesn't have to be neat or anything. And now a little bit of pink as well. And now some purple. This looks pretty cool as it is actually. And you can get some really nice effects. But with the power of the pokey thing, I am going to make this really amazing and marbled. Now, I think that is a really, really cool technique. And obviously, once you know how to do that, you can really let your imagination run wild with it. Um, you can do things like galaxy style, or even add little stars and kind of make them spread out, or even hearts like we did earlier. But I just think that's really fun. Now, the next thing we're going to do is a really cool kind of, oh, what are we going to call it? It's like, it looks a bit like embroidery. It's probably got a name, but I don't know what it is. Um, it's where you, first of all, have a base of very dried runout. So I did this one earlier, and it's nice and dry. It's been drying for about two hours. And I'm going to do this with a stiffer royal icing. So this is where my stiff pink is going to come in handy. So I have a number two nozzle on it, and I'm going to also need a small, flat paintbrush. So I'm going to start with the outline of one side of a flower, but it's not going to be a complete flower. It's just going to be poking out of the side of this circle. And now, using your little flat paintbrush, just dampen it a bit. And then you want to start in one of the nooks of your little flower petal and drag it into the centre. And now I'm going to go over that again but just a little bit lower. So I keep the definition that I just made, but make a, almost like an extra layer of petals. So it's starting to take shape. I'm just going to finish that one off and do a couple more around the cookie and we'll see how we go on. So that is a really, really pretty technique um, and it will look really good with different colour contrasts and different backgrounds, so give that one a go for sure. And the next thing we're going to do is to um, pipe with a stiffer royal icing onto a completely dry run out. So I've actually just got um, some white here and a very small tip, this is a 1.5 tube and I'm just going to pipe directly onto my dry run out. As you can see, piping using stiffer royal icing onto completely dry royal icing gives it a really nice raised texture rather than sinking in when you do wet on wet. So you can get some really nice detail in there. 
Now, obviously, um, at the moment, some of these ones look a little bit unfinished, particularly this one, but that's really easily remedied by using a border. And I'm going to show you how to do two kinds. The one I'm going to do on this one is like a continual border using little beading. So you want to start with a little blob, which you will drag backwards, and then do another one on top of that, drag it backwards, and so on in the crease of your cookie and icing so that you're joining those two up and helping it to all make sense. So as you can see, that has had such a nice effect on this cookie. It looks completely, well, complete. <laughs> it looks really classy and I love it. But there's another one you can do, which is also really simple, doesn't take quite as long as that one, and that is where you kind of almost stitch the two sides together, so the cookie, the naked cookie, and the iced bit of the cookie. So here we go. So with this one, you want to start by doing a blob on one side of the cookie, going into the seam, and then your next blob you want to be doing on the iced bit, going into the seam. The next one I'm going to show you is another one where we have a wet background and wet features going on and I'm going to do a little bit of dragging and it's going to be really awesome. So start by doing your background, just a full circle. You can then get some different colours of your choice and do some horizontal lines. When you're doing lines you always want to make contact with the first and then the last bit at the end of the line. And then, using your magical pokey, you want to start dragging down and up. Make sure you clean your pokey in between each drag. And the last thing I'm going to show you is a way of getting a really cool background just using lots of different colours and we're going to kind of blend them together. So I'm going to start by doing a stripe of yellow, obviously taking into account the fact that I'm doing a stripe on a round thing. So we'll start off like this. Now for the next bit, you can carry on using your pokey or you can use a really super small palette knife. And all I'm going to be doing is kind of blending each colour together a little bit from pink to white, white to blue and blue to yellow. As you can see, I'm just kind of dragging each colour into the other one. So I want a bit of white to end up in the pink and a bit of pink to end up in the white and so on. So that's it. A ton of techniques for you to try. I want your imaginations to run riot because there's tons of things you can do with these and I want to see all of your efforts on Instagram. If you use the hashtag Cupcake Gemma, I will see it. Um, also, the, don't forget this is the first of a series of masterclasses, every, the first Thursday of every month. Um, I've done masterclasses before and I'm going to bunch them all into a big playlist for you so you can check them out. And if there's anything particular that you want me to go in deep on, uh, <laughs> on a masterclass, then please write that in the comments box below and I'll check them out. I'll probably also do a poll on Instagram again because that was really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, what else can I tell you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this thing! <laughs> You've probably been admiring my apron. Um, this is actually my apron, not just the one that I own, but also the one that I designed. This is um, from uh, Cupcake Chambers merch, and you can get this on my website, along with a whole load of other stuff, so go and check that out. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I also hope you enjoyed Tuesday's tips with the C&D gang. They're going to be doing those every other Tuesday. 
Um, also, big news on the horizon is that uh, this Sunday is going to be the first ever classic cake bake along. Uh, come and join me at 11 a.m. There's going to be a recipe for a really classic cake. It's going to be great. I've already posted the ingredients and your shopping list on Instagram, so go and make sure you see that. Obviously, also make sure you follow me on Instagram because that's also brilliant. Um, and go and get all your ingredients and be ready, and I will see you on Sunday at 11. Early birdie. See you there. Ha, <laughs> ha,